Good morning everyone. Welcome to today's lecture which is going to be on professional restorations. End of this class you are expected to know the requirement of a successful interim restoration. You should be able to describe the currently available materials for fabrication of interim restoration and you should be able to discuss the material properties and its advantages, disadvantages and indications as applicable. To introduce you to provisional restoration, provisional means established for the time being pending a permanent arrangement. It is also called temporization, interim processes or a provisional processes. Why is a provisional restoration needed? Provisional restoration is given for a period of time until a permanent arrangement can be made. It is given to protect the prepared tooth and keep the patient comfortable. By successful treatment with provisional restoration, the dentist can get the patient confidence which is an influencing factor for success of the final restoration. During the time between the preparation of the tooth and the placement of a final restoration, the tooth is protected by the provisional restoration. Sometimes because of unforeseen events such as laboratory delays, patient inavailability or due to deliberate reasons like correction of TMJ disorders or periodontal diseases, a provisional restoration may have to function for extended periods. Thus, a provisional restoration should not be fabricated on the basis of expected short-term use. By definition, provisional restorations are defined as a fixed or removable processes designed to enhance aesthetics, stabilization and function for a limited period of time after which it is to be replaced by a definitive processes. Requirements of a provisional restoration fall under three categories that are biologic requirements, mechanical requirements and aesthetic requirements. Biologic requirements include protection of pulpal tissues, maintenance of periodontal health, should provide occlusal compatibility, should be able to maintain tooth position and should be able to protect the abutment tooth against fracture. Mechanical requirements include resisting functional loads, resist removal forces and should be able to maintain inter-abutment alignment. Aesthetic requirements include texture, translucency, color stability and it should be easily contourable. Coming to pulp protection, the temporary restoration or the provisional restoration must seal and insulate the prepared tooth surface from oral environment to prevent sensitivity and further irritation to the pulp. Factors contributing to pulp death include preparation trauma, microbial exposure, desiccation of the tooth structure, chemical exposure and thermal exposure. The restoration must be able to prevent extreme temperatures, insulate and prevent sensitivity, should be able to prevent microbiological infection, must prevent chemical and mechanical injuries and must prevent from any adverse pulp effect. Periodontal health the provisional restoration must have a good marginal fit, proper contour and a smooth surface to facilitate plaque removal. This is important when the crown margin will be placed subgingivally. Inflamed or hemorrhagic gingival tissues make procedures very difficult. Overextended margins in provisional restorations might cause gingival irritation leading to inflammation which could further result in necrotic tissues or bone destruction around the tooth. Coming to occlusal compatibility and tooth position, should be able to establish or maintain proper contacts with adjacent tooth. Inadequate contacts allow supra eruption and horizontal movement. Without proper occlusal contacts, the prepared tooth may extrude. This will make the permanent restoration too high in occlusion and further adjustment of the final restoration may result in an occlusal surface that is too thin or which is perforated.
this slide shows you the picture of a provisional restoration with rough margins which may jeopardize subsequent procedures uh, by contributing to plaque accumulation and resulting in an unhealthy periodontia. Provisional restorations should be able to ensure positional stability because tooth movement can occur and in cases where tooth movement occurs an additional treatment will be necessary. Areas of over contouring or areas in relation to the connector may need to be slightly enlarged to prevent breakage of the provisional restoration. Coming to prevention of enamel fracture, the temporary restoration should be able to protect the crown preparation margins, especially in partial coverage designs where the margin of the preparation is close to the occlusal surface of the tooth, which could be damaged even during chewing. This slide gives you the picture of over contouring, which is done for positional stability of the restoration. In anterior areas, over contouring is done to improve the strength of the provisional restoration but is limited due to aesthetics. In the posterior region, again aesthetics is less restrictive but over contouring should not be done so as to disturb the periodontal health. To avoid pulp irritation and tooth movement, a displaced provisional must be re-cemented. This is best prevented through proper tooth preparation with a closely adapted internal surface. Coming to removal for reuse, occasionally the provisional restorations need to be removed from the teeth for evaluating the abutment tooth or for impression making. In these cases, care should be taken to not damage the provisional restoration. Coming to the types of provisional restorations, provisional restorations can be classified based on the method of fabrication as prefabricated and custom fabricated restorations depending on the type of material used can be classified as resin based and metal based depending on the technique of fabrication is classified as direct technique, indirect technique and direct indirect technique based on the duration of use. Provisional restorations are classified as short-term restorations and long-term restoration. Coming to custom-made provisional restorations, it is a negative reproduction of either the patient's teeth before the preparation or a modified diagnostic cast. This can be obtained directly with any impression material, either with alginate, which is the irreversible hydrocolloid, or with silicone material. Based on the technique of fabrication, the direct technique, the provisional restorations are constructed with a matrix lined with provisional material that is placed directly on the prepared tooth. In the indirect technique, these are constructed by placing a filled matrix over a model of the prepared tooth. Thus, the provisional is constructed out of the patient's mouth. In the direct indirect method, the provisional restoration is made by forming a temporary in an indirect manner and then relining this directly in the patient's mouth. This method is useful when constructing temporary bridges because most of the work can be done in the laboratory. Requirements of provisional restoration are uh, it should be biocompatible, dimensional stability during solidification, easy to contour and polish, adequate strength and abrasion resistance, good aesthetics and patient accept. Coming to the advantages and disadvantages of the direct and direct technique, the advantages include minimum interference, it's helpful in evaluating adequacy of tooth reduction, a variety of materials can be used. Disadvantages are that additional wrap procedure is involved and it is time consuming. Coming to preformed provisional restorations, these are commercially available in various sizes. These restorations rarely satisfy requirements of a provisional but can be thought of as an external surface form rather than as a finished restoration and thus must be lined with autopolymerizing resin. Various alterations like internal relief, 
axial recontouring and occlusal adjustments are required in case of preformed provisional restorations. Materials used in preformed restorations include polycarbonate, cellulose acetate, aluminium and tin silver and nickel chromium. The advantages of preformed restorations are that it is less time consuming. Disadvantages, it rarely satisfies the patient's needs and is generally limited to single tooth preparations. Coming to the direct technique, here the external surface form is provided by the custom or prefabricated techniques already discussed. The patient's prepared teeth and gingival tissues directly provide the tissue surface form. However, potential tissue trauma from polymerizing resin and inherently poor marginal fit present as disadvantages. This slide shows you the picture of a provisional restoration where a prefabricated crown is first tried inside the patient's mouth for fit. The excess is trimmed and then is looted in position with a provisional cement. Coming to the indirect technique, impression of the prepared teeth and gingival tissues is made and poured in quick setting gypsum. The provisionals are fabricated outside the mouth. Advantages of this technique are that there is no tissue damage, allergy or sensitization to monomer. The procedure avoids subjecting a prepared tooth to heat created from polymerization. Better marginal fit as the stone restricts resin shrinkage during polymerization. This slide shows you the indirect technique in fabrication of provisional restoration. Here the diagnostic cast is first made. A diagnostic wax up is done with the tooth in position. A putty index is made from the diagnostic wax up. Autopolymerizing resin is filled into the putty index and this index is stabilized on the prepared cast. And the finished provisional is then trimmed, polished and seated in the patient's mouth. Coming to the direct indirect technique, the advantages of this technique are that reduced chair side time, less heat is generated in the patient's mouth and contact between the tissues and the monomer is reduced. This slide shows you the picture of the direct indirect technique wherein the provisionals are fabricated by the indirect technique and when the tooth preparation is completed, the provisionals are relined with self-curing resin. Disadvantages include that occlusal adjustments will still be needed in case of the direct indirect technique and the external surface form should be finished and polished before cementing in the patient's mouth. Coming to removal, re-cementation and repair. The provisional restoration needs to be removed when the patient returns for placement of a definitive restoration or for continued preparation. The fracture of the tooth or the foundation must be avoided. Risk minimized by using removal forceps which are directed parallel to the long axis of the tooth. A slight buccolingual rocking motion is required to break the cement seal in cases where the temporary crown needs to be removed. Coming to limitations, lack of inherent strength, poor marginal adaptation, color stability and wear properties, delectable odors, inadequate bonding characteristics, poor tissue response and difficult and incomplete cement removal. To summarize, although provisional restorations are usually intended for short term use and then discarded, they can be made to provide pleasing aesthetics, adequate support and good protection for the teeth while maintaining periodontal health. They may be fabricated in the dental office from the commercially available materials and a number of practical methods. The success of a FPD often depends on the care with which the provisional is designed and fabricated. Thank you.